Welcome to a lesson on the Alabama Paradox of Apportionment. The Alabama Paradox was the first of the apportionment paradoxes to be discovered. The U.S. House of Representatives is constitutionally required to allocate seats based upon population counts, which are required every 10 years after every census. The size of the House is set by statute. After the 1880 census, C.W. Seaton, Chief Clerk of the United States Census Bureau, computed apportionments for all house sizes between 275 and 350. It was discovered that Alabama would get eight seats with a house size of 299, but only seven seats with a house size of 300. In general, the term Alabama paradox refers to any apportionment situation where increasing the total number of items would decrease one of the shares, as we see here, which happened to Alabama. Notice how when the house size increased by one from 299 to 300, Alabama actually lost the seat. The number of seats went from eight to seven. A similar exercise by the Census Bureau after the 1900 census computed apportionments for all house sizes between 350 and 400. Colorado would have received three seats in all cases, except with a house size of 357, in which case it would have only received two. Let's take a look at a more detailed example. Here we'll use Hamilton's method to apportion 10 seats and then 11 seats among three states. Looking at the table below, notice how the total population would be six plus six plus two or 14, and therefore when there are 10 seats, the standard divisor would be 14 divided by 10 or 1.4, and when there are 11 seats, the standard divisor would be 14 divided by 11, or approximately 1.2727. And now to review, remember to find the quotas, we take the population of each state and divide by the standard divisor. So for example, when there are 10 seats and the divisor is 1.4, the quotas for state A and B would be the same because the population is the same. They would be six divided by 1.4, which is approximately 4.286, as we see here. And then for state C, we would have two divided by 1.4, giving a quota of approximately 1.429. And now to find the initial allocation, also called the lower quota, we remove the decimal part, giving us an allocation of four, four, and one. But because this sum is nine and there are 10 seats, the extra seat goes to the state that has the largest decimal part of the quota, which would be state C. So state C gets one more seat, giving a final allocation as we see here as four, four, and two, giving us a total of 10 seats. And now let's compare this to when there are 11 seats. We already know the standard divisor is going to be approximately 1.2727. Let's go ahead and check our quotas. So again, for both state A and B, we'd have six divided by 1.2727. So the quota is approximately 4.714. And then for state C, we would have two divided by 1.2727. So the quota is approximately 1.571. And now to find the initial apportionment or lower quota, we remove the decimal part, giving us an allocation of four, four, and one. Notice how this sum is nine, but now because we have 11 seats, we have two extra seats, which would be awarded to the two states with the largest decimal part of the quota. Notice here, that would be state A and B. So A gets an extra seat, and so does state B, giving a final allocation or a final apportionment of five, five, and one. So notice how when the seats went from 10 to 11, States A and B picked up an extra seat, but state C actually lost a seat. They went from two seats to one seat. This is an example of the Alabama paradox. This occurs because increasing the number of seats increases the fair share or quota faster for the larger states than for the smaller states. In particular, the larger states A and B had their fair share increase faster than smaller states C. Therefore, the fractional or decimal parts of the quota or fair share for A and B increase faster than those for C. 
In fact, they overtook C's fraction, causing C to lose its seat, since the Hamilton method examines which states have the largest fraction or decimal part of the quota. The Alabama population and new states paradoxes can occur with the Hamilton method. They will not occur with any other apportionment methods. However, the divisor method may violate the quota rule. The quota rule says that the number of representatives the state receives should be within one of the state's quota or fair share. I hope you found this lesson helpful.